In this video, we're going to talk about Osmada Eritrea. And for those who are wondering, that's how I was told to pronounce the city, Osmada. So don't write any comments talking about Sly, you're pronouncing it incorrectly, blah, 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 blah. But anyways, I just finished my trip to Eritrea. And so I'm just going to go over it real quick and touch on a few things that caught my eye for those who are watching, because I'm sure most people watching are probably never going to go there. And for the few, which means like three or four of you guys watching who plan to visit, I want to give you a little insight on what to expect so you're not caught off guard. Now, one disclaimer is that, you know what, let's just get into the video. One of the things that you may notice is I mainly stayed in the capital city. I didn't go out much to other parts of the country, although I wanted to. The problem was that this place is a cash society, meaning your credit cards won't work here. Not just U.S. credit cards, but I believe all credit cards. So you have to bring physical currency. Now, the problem I had was that the place I was or the country I was at before was also a cash society. Different countries have different limits on how much physical cash you can bring into them. So I used most of it up there. But when I arrived here in Osmada, I only had about $700 to play with. And keep in mind, I had to pay my hotel with cash, which was around 500 and something for the week. So I only had $180, $170 to get food, some tours, incidentals, et cetera, et cetera. That's why I only stayed in the capital city. Just keep in mind, there are other places to visit. And since we're talking about cash, let me go ahead and say that I think for most people, this city will be a little bit more expensive than you may have previously thought. Not saying it's super costly here, but it's just when you see some of the prices, you just may think, wow, I thought this would be just a little bit cheaper. I think the main reason why is that Eritrea's currency, which is called NACFA, is pegged to the US dollar, meaning that the exchange rate doesn't change. So no matter what happens in Eritrea, if there's a war, economic crisis, they find gas underneath their land, no matter what, it's going to be $1 to 15 NACFA, unless the government decides to change it. But you guys get what I'm trying to say. Another point I want to bring up is, and I don't know if you guys noticed it in the videos, I tried to cut those parts out, but I was, I was breathing hard. I didn't want you guys to hear every second. So again, I tried to take those parts out, but one thing I wasn't told was that Osmada is one of the highest capital cities in the world. Depending on which website you look at, Osmada is like number six or number seven, right after Addis Ababa. So although the city is flat, and very walkable, it's at a high altitude. If you have problems breathing, you're a little bit out of shape, make sure if you plan to visit, you hit the treadmill a little bit, you know, 20, 30 minutes every other day at least, and you should be fine. This next point is gonna be very important because the following three to four points are gonna branch off this one. They're all gonna be related. Now, when I first touched down in this city, I walked from the airport to my hotel. During the walk, it was super quiet. I didn't see many people. And I thought to myself, wow, it's kind of uh, empty right now. Airports are usually outside of the city, so I didn't read much into it. But then as I started getting closer to the city center, I still was thinking to myself, dang, where, where's all the people? I know it's early, but usually, morning time is busy people are getting to work grabbing their coffee trying to get places and so that's one big thing i want to say is that osmada doesn't feel like it has a large population i don't know if it's the puerto rican effect where you have more people living outside of the territory than in it like most puerto ricans and uh yes i know they're americans but you have more puerto ricans in mainland us than actually on the island and from what i understand there are a lot of Eritreans living outside of Eritrea. It seems that there's just, it just doesn't seem like there's a lot of people. Because of the relaxed vibe here and how the city isn't densely populated, Osmada feels like a, it feels like a huge town. Towns usually, again, compared to cities, tend to be quieter, more chill, more relaxed, slower pace of life and it tends to be an area where most people know each other and that's the vibe i got because after about the third day of walking around the city i started running into the same people people i met at restaurants random shops i would walk into a couple of people i met at the hotel i would have to imagine if i was living here for 10 years i would probably know everyone so i know everyone here has to know each other and this might be a reason why i believed it felt super safe now let's talk about this. Whenever I bring up safety 
in a country, I always try to take myself out of it because I know my situation might be different from others. Also, I can bring up statistics, but that's boring. You know, hey, this place has 9,000 deaths per capita or blah, 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 blah. It's boring for most people. So I just try to give observable information. And what I observed in Asmara is that it seemed very, very safe. Why, Sly? One, at night, you'll see people of all demographics walking around with no care in the world. You couldn't see because in the videos it was super dark, but I saw it. A lot of elderly people walking around, a lot of women walking around in the middle of the dark on random side streets by themselves. When I was walking on a dark side street, People weren't crossing the street. Oh my God, he's going to rob me or anything like that. They just walk past me. And last but not least, I've been to countries, you know, shout out to South America where, you know, people will tell me, hey, be careful in this area. Don't go here. Don't go there. If you go here, make sure, you know, don't show your phone, don't show your valuables, et cetera, et cetera. But in Osmodot, people are like, hey, don't worry, you'll be fine. And these are women telling me this. It's safe here. You can walk around anywhere, any time of day, any time of night, you'll be just fine. And I don't get the feel that people are worried about violent crimes in Asmara. And if I had to imagine the government don't play that, usually those one party governments, those, those one party states, they don't really play that. And last but not least, the people. Now, growing up in Seattle, I'm used to being around not only Eritreans, but Ethiopians, Somalians, and just East Africans in general. And it was no different than some of the other East African countries I've been to. The people seemed soft-spoken, at least from the first introduction, the people seemed soft-spoken. They were very hospitable, friendly. I mean, just kind, like most of the countries I go to. So shout out to Eritreans. Hopefully things get better in the country. But with that being said, this trip has been very insightful, very interesting. I actually wanted to visit this place a couple of years ago, but at the time, the opportunity didn't present itself, but it did this time. So I, I hopped on it and it was a good experience. It was a learning experience. Now, this next country I'm going to should be interesting. It's a country I want to visit a couple of years ago. And again, the opportunity has presented itself this time. So I'm going to jump on it and this should be an interesting one but anyways let me go ahead and do right here appreciate you guys watching hope you guys enjoyed the video hope you guys learned something from the video and be looking out like i said i'm gonna take a maybe a week week or two off we'll see and be looking out for the next video from a nearby country okay i'm gonna catch you guys at the next one deuces